Hey guys, Happy Splasher here. Good morning. So right now we're going to start our Dark Tower run this week. So yeah, so let's hop right in. Uh, currently, as you can see, we are on the first floor. We actually waited until the world event because we do want these additional event runes as rewards. As you can see, it is a little small, but every little rune will count, especially since there is a new hero this time around. So yeah, so let us hop right in. We are currently using the Geisha skin along with the Lady Pet, as usual. Okay, so let's take a look at the buildings. And we're facing a Ogre and a Drogon. We're going to start with our Yorick here on D1. We'll be able to deal some damage to these buildings and then also give our Yorick an attack boost. Okay, against this Yoster, which will silence our male heroes when she dies, we won't actually summon another male hero, although all of these are male. But let's go with heroes with high stats, so at least then we can play around the silence for later. Okay, as you can see, the death trigger did go off. Okay, and our York is now destroyed. We have this puppet mistress, which summons a puppet. That puppet will cleanse and also reflect some damage. We will go with our... No, we'll go with this melee hero over here on B1, just to clear out the puppet mistress. Okay, this Elwyn Fierce will do some bleed. We'll look to clear that out. Actually go with this melee hero over here on B3. This Eternal Sun will give us Metal Shield, which is now silenced. <laughs> that is okay. Okay, against this Aphrodite, we have some extra damage that is going to happen, also some health runes. I'm going to go with our... Just going to go with... Hmm, actually, we don't need to worry about so much about that puppet. I want to deal damage to this Aphrodite. At least also use a blocker as well. Looks like we drew out the stones, which will heal. Okay, we also have this building over here that will do some block. We'll go with our Count Vlad, trying to set up for board wipe. And then also we can help ourselves out with this Sir Lancelot here on A3. Sir Lancelot will do some reflect damage whenever one of our heroes are attacked. Okay, and now all these heroes are now wounded, so we'll have to clear those out. We'll go with our Caesar's head over here on the one. The Caesar's head will give us some metal shield whenever we destroy an enemy, and also deal some damage whenever we have one of our heroes destroyed. Okay, we have the Keeper of the Storm here, which will give metal shield to a random ally, but in this case they have none, so we do want to clear that out. We'll go with the life steal to deal some extra damage, and then we'll also summon another. I guess we'll summon another Sir Lancelot, just in case our first one gets silenced, so we can also deal some more reflect damage. Then we also get some more block on our heroes. And as you can see, the Groot coming out in play to silence our Sir Lancelot, so that is okay. We'll go with the... Well, we'll go with the Santa on C1. At this point, we just want to deal as much damage as we can, and then also put some more pressure on the board. As you can see, we're dealing some more damage with the Caesar's head. We have this Toxic Mantis with some attack steal and then also some Toxin. We want to avoid him for now, so what we'll do is we'll do a shuffle to find us some ranged heroes. In this case, we'll attack on the open lane B here. At this point, once the Toxic Mantis destroy this building, we'll see what will happen right there. So that is Sport Week. Okay, we will keep going. Ooh, we're facing the Morgoth skin. So Morgoth, as you can see here, deals some damage at the end of the turn to our Warlord. We'll also have our heroes deal some damage to themselves, and then also the Soulbinder Blades to the front row. This new Warlord actually deals the most damage on this third skill, so we'll need to save our Ward White for when that comes out. So in the meantime, let's actually go... Let's try and bring this out. Let's actually go with heroes with high stats. So we'll go with this... Um, uh, Kabos here on B3. We'll get some block and then also do some damage. Okay, we have this Frost Snow Queen, which also sets the health of one of our heroes to one whenever an order hero comes in play. Do you want to clear this out now? Because it is going to be a problem, although we still need to worry about the extra damage. Suppose we could clear it out, but I think we can play this a little... Nah, you know, we won't play it slow. We'll just summon this range hero. This Dark Witch deals some damage to all non-chaos heroes and then get rid of the Frost there. 
Okay, this friendly spirit has some flight and freezes one of our heroes when she dies. That's cool, we'll just clear her up. You can see the death trigger did freeze one of our heroes. And now the Morgoth has done the first skill, so these heroes that are on the field already, they'll take their damage, as you can see right there. Okay, we got this turtle teacher with some flight and also with some spikes given as well. We'll go with the uh, red woman here on D2 just to clear it out. Yeah. Oof. Okay, our Lord of the De Undead summoned a rotter for every one of our attacks that are taken to the Warlord. And then the scrap here did the attack steal, so because we had heroes that were actually destroyed. Uh, you don't have actually anything here to clear this out, unfortunately. Let's go with the... Uh, ooh. Yeah, we will go with the Count Vlad. He's trying to set up for board wipe here. Uh, we're actually going to leave this lane open so that way we can... Oh, well, let's see. We can get there. We'll actually just go with the hero with high, high, high stats. And we'll place him here on A3 just to block and also take advantage of the attack room. All right, so here are the soul binders. As you can see, whenever ranged at ally attacks, we'll do some extra damage to our heroes. Okay, since all these heroes are now wounded by the Count Vlad with the Vampirism at the beginning of the turn, we'll go with the board wipe. And normally I would summon the Yoster here, but this time I actually want to take advantage of the... Yeah, actually, yeah, we will take advantage of the Alexandra here on C1. We have some cleanse at the end of the turn, so now all of our heroes that have the attack steal have their attacks coming back. Okay, we see the dead lord here with some zombies and then also the transform. We'll go with the life steal, we'll do some damage. And then we'll also go with this range hero over here on B1. We need to clear out some zombies. And you see those zombies do, do, do some poison, but again, our cleanse has taken care of that. At this point now, we'll go against the Argeos over here. We'll go with our own scrap here on the three on the open lane, the attack steal. And there we go. So that is CRS. Ooh, and we also got double copies of the event rare. Very nice. Okay, so yeah, so let's keep going. Okay, another ogre and a sentry pet. Uh... We do have a couple of options. I think this Void Jewel is going to be pretty good. And objectively, you can just deal damage that way. You know, I think we can force a silence this way. This will be fine. Let's actually go with the Circuit here on D3. Circuit can deal some Toxin and then also deal some random damage. In this case, we pull up the building. Okay, we have this Chubacabras over here with some Vampirism when attacked and also some... Negative attack to our order heroes. Uh, we're going to go with our melee hero here on D2. The reason why is because they want to freeze this hero. Okay, we have this Jotun here, which will freeze the enemy that attacks. Go with our melee hero over here on a 3 with the high health. Yeah! Okay, uh, I don't have anything to clear this out quite yet. We have this Blood Lord here with some Vampirism. Do I have anything to clear that out? How much is the negative attack? It's 78. Okay. In that case, we'd still be able to clear this out too. Okay, it's Order Heroes, yes. Okay, so in this case, we'll just go with our melee hero here with the high health. Now, this Aravada will get some resistance and then also some heal. Yeah. I can see the heal right there. Okay, we have the whoops, we have the all prince of sands that will give miss and then also negative attack when he dies. Go with this range hero over here on a one. This love mage will heal one of our heroes whenever another one is destroyed. In this case, they did the silence, so all of our skills are gone. Whoa! Except for the Aravada, which has immunity to silence, but that's very nice. Okay, in this case, we have the Child of the Chaos summoning the tree in front of themselves. Go next with actually right here. This will be fine. Let's go with the Count Vlad. And then also, I'm going to follow up next with this the TNT here on the. 
And you see we've marked some heroes with some adjacent damage and then also dealing some extra damage and the damage wound. Okay, our Count Vlad still stuck around. We have the Strigar here with the attack boost. We'll go over the board wipe now. As you'll see the negative attack happen to our heroes, which is okay. We'll go with this range hero next on D1. This Flammy Heli will summon some crystals, which will allow us to get Mental Shield and then also block. Okay, we have this Flesh Eater over here with some Vampirism. We'll go with this range hero next on, um, on D2. I did want to destroy this, but at the same time, I do want to protect our heroes that we have here. As you can see, this Lady Medusa, which will freeze the enemies in the line for one turn. We'll go with the Lifesteal now. Actually, no, we can actually hold off on Lifesteal. My, my apologies. We'll go with... You know, we'll go with the Jorman Grand here on uh, B3. We'll be able to freeze two random enemies and then also deal some extra damage to uh, the Warlord. Okay, uh, we have the Kabas here with some reflect damage and then also some block. We'll go with the Life Steal because we're running low on health. Then we'll also go with this range hero next on B1. As you can see, we dealt some damage to a random wounded enemy. Okay, once again, some more block. We'll go with this range hero next on A1. This Lake Pixie will freeze one of the enemies at the end of the turn. Okay, they are doing some sudden death. Okay, uh, we have this engineer here, which will heal the enemies for some health. We're gonna go with our grace over here on A1 to deal some random damage. We were hoping that the random damage would actually clear out the Kaba so we wouldn't clear off the Reflect. Okay, in this case we have freezing random enemy in line, so that's good. We'll go with our melee hero here on a uh, B2. Okay, and then now we cleared both of those heroes out because there's some extra damage because of the frozen heroes being destroyed. Okay, we have another piece of ice coming out. We'll go with... I knew Dunahe has a little bit of block. We'll go with this melee hero. We'll go with the Count Vlad here on A3. With the Vampirism to deal damage through the block. Okay, it looks like our Grace now has seven extra attacks. So what we'll do is we'll just summon this Void Juggler here on D1. We'll give extra attack to one of our heroes. As you can see with the extra attacks now, even with the block, we have lethal. So there we go. Okay, yeah, well, let's uh, let's keep going. Okay, we are facing a geisha with a gleedy pet. Okay, let us start off with our TNT over here on Whoa! A1. And you can see we have that marked with adjacent damage, and then also these damage runes over here. Okay, we're in kind of a weird spot now because of this Count Vlad that they can summon. They also have the Stark here, which will give damage to our heroes whenever they get an attack bonus. So we want to avoid summoning heroes when they do. We'll go with the Count Vlad and then try to find a way to... I guess we'll go with this Flight Hero over here on, on A3. So can we can at least protect our melee heroes from being attacked. Or our range hero from being attacked. At this point now, because of their Count Vlad, we we should go for a board wipe. Otherwise, they'll be able to clear our heroes out, so we'll clear those. And then we'll continue, and let's see here. You know, this Beholder deals some extra splash runes for us. So some damage pentagrams. So yeah, actually, let's go with that. I didn't see a lot of damage runes out. Okay, they didn't go for their board wipe. Okay, they have this Lady Wild over here, which will give poison to a random ally, but this Dark over here has immunity, so he won't get a boost. We'll go with our melee hero over here on A3. This Axe gets an attack boost for every Chaos hero on our side when it first comes out. Also does some reflect damage, as you can see right there. And then more importantly, he gets extra attack whenever a Chaos hero comes out. So in this case, let's go with... Just gonna attack on the open lane B here. 
At this point, we're trying to rush as much damage as we can. Yeah. Hey, it's another axe. But in this case, we're actually going to go with the grace here on B1 to deal some random damage to clear out these heroes. Okay, we did see a death trigger go off in that okay, At this point now, we'll go with the lifesteal. We'll go with a hero with high attack. Which actually, in this case, is this Lady Claire with the attack boost for over here. And there we go. So that was Neko Sensei. Those damage runes helped us in the beginning because we stopped potential places where they could have summoned heroes. So yeah, so let's keep going. Okay, we are currently facing a Jimmy Rocket Boy with a Sentry Pet. And they have this Dehoron here, which has 100% resistance because of their skill here. We will go with, let's see, it's going to make the most sense. Yeah, you know, actually, we'll go with our, uh, what do you call it? We'll go with our Eternal Sun here on C2, so we can give some Mental Shield over to our Caesar's Head, which also gives Mental Shield. Okay, uh, let's see, we'll go with our, against this Sage Disciple with the block, because of the block runes, we'll go with this, our Flight Hero here with Metal Shield, just a block. And right now we're just trying to protect our setup as much as we can. Okay, in this case, let's see, I do want to wait for those Jimmy Rock boys to come out, so we'll do that. We'll actually go and place our Melee Hero in front of the Eternal Sun to give us some protection. Because of this wound protector here with the mental shield and the light. Alright, so there, here are the Jimmy Rocket Boys. Okay, as you can see, our Imago is actually destroyed and summons uh, moths. Okay, uh, let's see. I do know that we have this ghost to here with some extra damage to our warlord whenever we are attacked. We'll go with the Count Vlad. And then we won't go for the board wipe, but however, we will go with the Freddy here on uh, B3, which will put some curse on the heroes. Yeah. Okay, and in this case, as you can see over here, some damage to all these enemies. Okay, but more importantly, they are now wounded, especially this ghost so we'll go for the board wipe. Okay, and at this point, we just need to get rid of this wing protector who's in the way because of the flight, which we don't currently have. Does have curse though, so what we can do is we will attack this range here. Uh, we'll attack this uh, Shrimkin here. Yeah. So you can see the curse will go off once, curse will go off twice, and then some extra damage because of the open lane. So we have the Grace here with the random damage, and then also as you can see, if infected with the Freddy because of the death trigger. Uh, don't have anything quite yet to destroy it. We can go for as much damage as we can. We'll go with our Kabas here on B, uh, B3. Actually, you know, that was enough damage. Well, there you go. <laughs> so that was Citizen over there. Okay, so yeah, let's keep going. Okay, another Ogre, another Sentry. Okay, so we are starting off first. I'm going to go with... Thinking if it's better to go with the hero with high health or some hero with some extra stuff. I think we'll go with the hero with extra stuff. So in this case, we'll go with this high tinker here on, on B3. This high tinker will summon a mini Tesla X. It will give an attack boost and then also have some extra damage whenever one of our heroes are destroyed. Uh, so in this case, now we got this Dragara here with the attack boost. Not enough for us to destroy it. We can deal some additional nature damage, so that'll put it at 200. I know we can deal some 41. It's not quite enough. We'll go with this range hero here on B2. The Sting Weasel will transform a wounded range enemy into a reward box. If he ever gets destroyed. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, we do have enough attack now, so that's good. We'll go with this range hero next against this novice. And then this Cursed Shaman has a totem, which we can use to protect. Okay, uh, let's see. We got this Void Juggler here with extra attack. Let's go with... You know our heroes are going to have to silence, get silenced eventually because of the Ogord. So let's go with our uh, All Prince of Sands here so we can either force the silence or continue to give miss. 
In this case, we forced the silence, so that's good. Okay, we have this Villano Mad Genius, which will give negative attack to our heroes, and then also heal the Warlord at the end of the turn. We'll go with... I'm not too concerned about this now. We'll actually go with... We'll do, raise two random range enemies. That's actually not bad. Let's do that. And see a little bit of a health boost, and that's fine. Okay, we force the stones. Okay, uh, we got this death whelping with reborn and flight. We'll go with. We go with the summon could potentially be destroyed. We'll go with. Ooh, this is actually not bad. We'll go with the Queen Anata on a on a three. You can see all these heroes are now poisoned, taking a little bit of damage. Okay, we have this Dominus here on uh, A4, which actually deals some adjacent damage and extra attack. Uh, let's see, we'll go with the Count Vlad. Okay, uh, don't have enough for wounded heroes yet. Was there extra poison damage here? Yeah, that's what we need. And then let's go with... Oh yeah, this Justice Inquisitor will give Mista two random Chaos heroes at the end of the turn. Or chaos enemies, rather. And all these heroes are actually chaos, as you can see from their symbols. Okay, we have the evil helper transforming our Justice Inquisitor into a reward box. As you can see, the Count Vlad is still alive, so with the extra damage at the beginning of the turn, we'll now go for the board wipe. And then let's continue. Let's go with... Thinking what's going to make the most sense. No, this is actually going to help us out, clear out some more heroes just in case. So we'll go with the Tiling Dragon Dance with the extra Mushus. With some random damage from a wounded enemy. Oof, okay. So they got the Chupacabras here, which is going to give negative attack to order heroes, which includes all of these Mushus. We'll go with, let's see here, damage that way. Thinking what's the best way to clear this out. We'll actually go with the... We'll go with this Grummery Nightchild on D1. We can deal some curse damage. So at least that way we can deal some damage. Although uh, curse is not that, that much, actually. Okay, this is fine. Uh, we got the Freddy here doing some curse onto our heroes, except Chaos Heroes. So that actually doesn't hit the Grummery Nightchild. We'll continue summoning Chaos Heroes in order to clear this out. And then also avoid the curse from later. You can see that Vampirism coming into play. Okay, our Freddy, uh, our Fireworker here is infected with the Freddy skill, so we will come back later. Uh, let's see, this Herald of Spring deals some damage to our male heroes. I'm going to avoid the Jubacabras for now, and we'll continue summoning some Chaos heroes. We'll attack on the open lane A here. Okay, you can see the Freddy come out and play. We have the curse again. We are also dealing some additional damage to the Warlord whenever a cursed enemy is destroyed. Okay, we got this Free Folk leader over here with giving mist to one of our heroes. We'll go with the Lifesteal, and then we'll also go with... Let's see, we can deal some Sudden Death. And we'll go with the Angelia here. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to have enough for lethal, but I did summon the Angelia because of the cleanse skill, which I should have actually gotten rid of the Freddy. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh yeah, if a curse here is destroyed because of the Grimmery Nightchild, we'll just deal damage to the Warlord. So in this case, we just need enough to destroy the Free Folk. And there we go. So that was Mike. Okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep going. Okay, another ogre, another glee pet. Uh, let's start with what's going to make the most amount of sense here. Yeah, you know, we'll go with the York here on on C1. We'll deal some damage to the heroes in the line. Also, get an attack boost. Hmm. Okay, they have Alexandria here, which silences the enemy that attacks. In, in this case, the York, so it doesn't actually trigger off the reborn. Uh, I do know that we can deal some random damage with this pirate. That could potentially set up a cold light. As you can see right there. We do have this life palace in front of the Alexandria, so that actually gets around that. 
We have this junk rat over here with some pierce. We'll go with the evil's helper on a one. Oh, I'm a little short on damage. Whoops. Oh, this is okay. All right, so we did force the silence, which is really nice. Okay, we have this turtle teacher, which will give some spikes. We'll go with, let's see. Ooh, this is actually not bad. You know, I'm going to take the chance here. We're going to go with the first count of Vlad, and then we'll actually follow up with another count of Vlad. Okay, we have this Mina Helsing, which will deal some extra damage to our Warlord whenever we attack. We're going to go with the Board Wipe now, so that way we don't take the extra damage because we are running low on health. And then we'll also follow up with, let's see here. We'll follow this melee hero on a uh, D3. Alright, so we force the stones. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have our Count Vlad's dealing damage at the beginning of the turn. We have this Puppet Mistress so that summoned a puppet, but that was destroyed. Go with, let's see what makes sense. We'll go with the Gremory Nightchild, actually, on C1 here. Burning some curse on some enemies, and then also trying to deal some more damage to them. Okay, we have this Old God here, which will freeze our ranged heroes whenever he's attacked. And then also, if we silence, we'll actually take damage to our Warlord by lifesteal. We'll go with our building here on D2. This Void Rock will give extra attack to one of our heroes when at the end of the turn. Also do some damage when spikes happen. Okay, uh, let's see. We have a Turtle Teacher once again blocking. We'll go with the Lifesteal now because we're low on health. And then we'll also follow up next with this Dominus here on C3. And see what the extra attack and it allows us to go through the old god. <laughs> hey, look, it's Mina Helsing again. Okay, we don't have anything for her now, but what we can do, I do know that our marquee here does some poison. That's good. I'm gonna do a shuffle because of the amount of evasion that we have, and then also these extra attack is just gonna cause more damage to us. So in this case, let's look for a hero that can actually destroy this, which we don't have right now. We'll do we'll do one more shuffle. Let's see what we can find. In this case, actually we do. Okay, let's just see if they have any block, which they don't. We'll go with the Whoa! we'll go with the Koshi over here on D3 because of the high attack. Take some damage here, but that's okay. Yeah! <laughs> and they go with their own Koshi. Okay. Got it. Alright. So I didn't see they do give negative attack to our heroes and then also gets a health boost. We'll go with this range here over here on D1. It deals damage to a chaos enemy. Okay, we have our damage at the beginning of the turn. We'll go with our range hero over here on a one. And there we go. So that was Mrs. OXO. We can do one more. So yeah, let's keep going. It's Supreme QQ. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do like a couple of our heroes here. Let's actually continue and go with our TNT again. So we'll go here on a one, marking the damage runes over here. We could have went with the Masura on A3, but a little unreliable. Uh, I do like being able to just mess around with their board. All right, we have the Yost over here, which will silence our male heroes. You know we have this thunder, which will deal damage at the end of the turn, so we'll go here on D1. Okay, also you can see the Yoster giving a health boost at the end of the turn for every female. Uh, I don't have anything to clear things out, but we'll go with our heroes with high stats, and we'll actually protect... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll protect our, our TNT. And see our damage taken at the beginning of the turn, that's okay. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so we are going to see our heroes getting silent at some point. Don't have any other way to clear this out, and we don't want to have our heroes being destroyed, so we'll actually go with the Count Vlad. Uh, we'll go with the silence, or the destruction skill that will force the silence. And then we'll go with the hero with high stats. So in this case, the Koshi over here. Okay, we force the silence. 
As you can see, Arkoshi has relatively high stats still. Okay, we have this Arioch here, which will give bleeding to our heroes when they come on play, and then also does some attack steal and invulnerability. We don't have actually anything right now. Uh, we actually don't want to summon any of these heroes. You can freeze a random enemy in line, but that's really it. I'm actually going to skip the turn so we, we don't force the bleeding because we aren't summoning anything. So as you can see, our wounded heroes will still have their attack stolen. Yeah. Okay, in this case, let's see here. We have this lizard man, which will deal some, uh, let's see, the damage rune and also some poison. Guess we'll actually go with our Kabas here on B1. We'll get some health back from a melee kill. Okay, we forced the reflect damage, which is good. Don't want the bleeding to actually destroy our Kabas. Do know that we can deal some damage to chaos enemies, but that's really it. See if we can deal anything else here. Because once he attacks, he'll actually be destroyed by bleeding. So what we'll do is... I guess we'll go with our melee hero with the fight. Oh, if I dealt a little more damage, I would have been good here. I think we're gonna be good. We're gonna go with our... let's see. Oh, let's see. Okay, the healing stone will actually give them health. And then we're gonna take damage over here over there let's go do the bleed let's go with the lifesteal because we are running low on health let's go also with the malia here on b uh, d2 yeah. ah really need need her to survive because of the poison damage okay uh oh okay the ariok isn't going to be an issue anymore because of the healing stone in the way We'll go with the, you know, we'll have some bleed over here. You know, let's actually put some curse on some heroes. So the Grimmie Night Child here with some curse. You just got to find some way to punch through here for damage. If you don't have. <laughs> okay, uh, still don't have anything. And this Grace here with the random damage is actually going to clear us out. So yeah, we did make a couple of misplays on those previous turns. We'll go actually over this here on uh, D3 here, just to block. Yeah, we're gonna take lethal now. Uh, yeah, unfortunate, but that's okay. Okay, so we'll actually stop it here for now because we don't wanna make this video run too long. So yeah, so we will see you guys later. This is Happy Splasher, signing off.